Hey guys, Alex Tweedo here, product manager at Checked. And today I'm going to be helping you better understand the value of our token check and how it interacts with our identity functionality. Um, so before we get into the juicy stuff, I think it's probably best to explain the different ways that check can be used. I think the first two points here, people listening will probably be a bit more familiar with. So the first is peer-to-peer -peer transactions. So I could send you a sum of check directly. You could send me a sum of check directly. Um, and secondly, participation in consensus and governance. So we've had the checked mainnet up and running for about a year now. Um, and if you're part of the community, you may have been able to stake your check or delegate to node operators uh, from which you might earn some block rewards. And you can also participate in our decentralized governance framework uh, and vote using your check token on governance proposals. But I think it's really the next two uh, points here that I want to focus on a bit more in today's video. Um, the first being using check to write identity transactions to the network. Uh, and the second being using check to unlock extra trusted data for verifying credentials. And I'll get into what all that means a bit later. Uh, but before we jump into the good stuff, let's do a quick recap on uh, the sort of trust triangle and what we're really building here in terms of the identity functionality. Um, I think a really core sort of bit of information to understand is the sort of first point. So in order for any uh, credentials to be issued, the first thing that needs to happen is an issuer needs to register their digital signature, which is called a decentralized identifier on the check network. And using this signature, they can sign credentials, which are like a new format of data. And these credentials can then get sent uh, off chain to the holder. And you, me, we can hold these credentials in a digital identity wallet or a crypto wallet, uh, kind of like NFTs. So they sort of sit with you, you hold them unilaterally. And the holder then can choose and elect to share this data and these credentials with a third party verifier. And that third party in the background is able to trust the issuer because they can see uh, and they can resolve the did of the issuer. So on the checked blockchain, there's a did, the verifier can see that and then they can trust that this data that I've presented them is actually from the issuer. So that's the sort of core premise of what we're trying to do in, on the identity side. Um, and one of the things that we've been sort of going at, well, speaking a lot about since the launch of the network is introducing uh, payments almost in the opposite direction to the flow of credentials. So currently there's no real incentive for, for example, the issuer to give dates, to issue me a credential and to give that data out into uh, the open because they don't receive any financial or commercial benefit of that. So one of the big uh, sort of USPs of Checked really is building these payment rails where if I say release this data, later I could receive maybe a recurring revenue stream every time that data is used. So we've been looking at ways that you as a holder or companies as issuers can receive uh, payment in return for sort of uh, issuing and presenting these credentials. Um, so that's a bit of background on Checked really quick. I'm sure there's other videos out there that you can go and see if you want a bit more of a deep dive into that. But what we're here for really today is understanding how the Check token can be used. So the first, and I touched on it a bit earlier, is for creating identity transactions on the network. So the probably the most predominant identity transaction which I'll speak about today is creating a DID. So an organization might want to create a DID because that acts as the sort of root of trust for that organization. And when you create a DID, there's going to be a fee associated with it. So in point one here, what you'll see is this fee is split between a utility fee and the gas fee. So the utility fee that we've set initially for creating a DID is 50 check. And the gas fee is usually quite negligible. Uh, it's usually you know around uh, 0 0.1 check or under um but then once you've sort of paid that fee something that we've recently introduced in our latest update um is a burn mechanism so every specifically identity transaction that's written to the network there's a percentage of that transaction which will be burnt so 
uh, initially we're going to set the burn factor, I believe, to 50%. So if you're creating a did and you're paying 50 check for that, around 25 check is going to be burnt. Uh, on top of that, we've also got a community pool fee. So from this 50 check, uh, a percentage of that will get sent to the community pool, which is an aggregated pool of value, which can then be used to pay for uh, developments on the check network uh, and the community can vote on what it gets used for. So let's just say out of this 50 check, about one check goes to the community pool. And the remaining 24 check will get distributed as block rewards to uh, the nodes, the validators, and also to people who are staking the delegators. So I think it's important to explain that we've updated our tokenomics recently to have this cascading fee where the value of writing a did will actually uh, result in a lot more actions happening than just that. Um, the reason I think we wanted to do this is because in introducing something like token burns puts downwards pressure on the supply of the check token. So that counteracts inflation. And by doing so, we can actually bring the number of check tokens in existence back down to the towards the initial 1 billion tokens that we issued at launch. Um, and it's important to note at this point that all of these parameters that I've mentioned, so creating a did, updating a did, uh, the burn factor, the community pool fee, et cetera, can all be adjusted in the future by uh, governance votes. So you can propose a vote and you can vote on how these fees change in the future. Um, so that's sort of one use of the check token. And this sort of lays the foundation for our, our sort of next use of the check token, which is how check is used to unlock trusted data. And what I mean by this is, right, let's sort of set the scene. When you're, it, let, let's, let's take an ecosystem maybe where there's a bank which is issuing you a credential for your name and your age and you're using that credential to maybe go and sign up for an insurance company, something quite regulated, something quite important. Um, so that insurance company might want to know more than that. So they might receive the credential that you've presented them and they might see that, right, there's a decentralized identifier associated or that signs the credential and they can resolve that. But beyond that, they might want to, to see more. They might want to see, A, that the credential hasn't been revoked, and B, that this did that they can see um, is actually related to the bank. And it's not just some uh, random fraudulent party that's created a did and has issued this credential. So these extra checks will probably need to be carried out a lot to ensure that the verifier can actually trust the issuer and also trust the validity of the credentials. Um, so in this sort of uh, flow, you can see that the issuer issues a credential to the holder, the holder presents the credential to the verifier, um, but is this trust? Is this enough trust? Because the verifier can see that the DID resolves to a DID document, but they don't necessarily know that the DID is legit, and they don't necessarily know that the credential hasn't been revoked by the issuer at some point. So where we sort of come in now is there needs to be almost like a fourth party in this trust triangle which is a status registry and the status registry might attest to a couple of things it might say right the issue is did is legit and we can prove this because it's maybe on a status list or a trust registry and we can show that other organizations vouch for this did or the status list might say the credential that you've been presented is still valid and has not been revoked and these extra checks are really important. Um, and this is sort of how we are going to be using uh, check to sort of gate this extra data. So check can be used as a method of payment for verifiers to fetch the extra trusted data from status registries. And then this fee that's been paid to the status registry can be distributed back to the issuer, creating this sort of cyclical uh, incentivized payment mechanism. And maybe some of that fee also goes to the validators and delegators. Um, so at a very high level, that's how it works. But I think it's also important to note that this process has to be both privacy preserving and decentralized. So this status registry that we're talking about can't just be us spinning up a server. It needs to be something that's robust and that doesn't correlate any data from 
uh, the credential that's being presented and the fee that's being paid uh, back. So the issuer can't know who's using their credentials and there can be no way of surveilling this sort of information. So we need to be able to blind and decorrelate information at this sort of status registry level. Um, so we've been doing a lot of thinking about this and uh, I think we're going to be releasing a lot more over the next couple of weeks and months uh, into 2023 about how we're really architecting this. But the core sort of components are we're going to be using a revocation registry or a status registry. Uh, we're going to be using a payment gateway and there's going to be some sort of settlement and clearing method. Um, and across all of these sort of components, there's two requirements. One, how do we make it privacy preserving? And how do we make it decentralized and resilient? And by solving this sort of problem, we can really kickstart the utility of the check token. Because if you can use the check token to unlock this data and then it gets paid back to the uh, issuer, for example, then that creates a recurring revenue stream for the issuer. And it sort of kickstarts the adoption of SSI. Um, so yeah, in a nutshell, that's sort of the four ways that the check token is uh, going to be used at a pretty high level. And I'm sure we can go into further detail in our blogs. Um, so yeah, thank you for listening and uh, look forward to seeing you all in the community.